close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. This is a way of training the mind. We need to train the mind because the mind is the source of all our actions, and our actions are what shape our lives. And if the mind isn't trained, then the way we shape our lives is going to be all screwy. Distorted here, distorted there. It's like someone who hasn't been trained to be a real carpenter but takes a saw and hammer and tries to make something. It's not going to look good. If the carpenter has been trained, okay, then you can expect good chairs, good tables, good buildings because of the training of the person who's making the thing. So look at the mind. That's the maker of your actions. We're coming to this world. We all want happiness. We say, may I be happy? May I be happy? It's a chant we have every day. May all beings be happy. But beings are being born, and then they're going to die. That's part of the way things are. There's a case where King Vasanity came to see the Buddha. and As he was talking to the Buddha, one of his men came up and said that his favorite queen had died. And the king breaks down. And so the Buddha says, when has it ever happened that someone who was born doesn't get old, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die? It's in the nature of things to be that way. This happens to us, it happens to everybody. But then you think about that reflection that the Buddha had. We're subject to aging, illness, and death, separation. We have our actions that determine whether we're going to suffer happiness or, or, or pain. So in the midst of all this, this is what we've got. We've got our actions. That's the one thing that we can train in ourselves, and then we want to pass this on to other, other people. As we pass away, then they're going to take our place. We want to make sure that they take our place well, because we're going to come back. We want to come back to a world where people have been well trained. So we train ourselves now, and then we help pass it along. And this way goodness stays in the world. There was another case where Venerable Sariputta passed away. Ananda goes to see the Buddha, reports the news, and says, it's not my mind was all confused. Everything seemed to be dark when I heard that Sarabhut had passed away. And the Buddha said, well, did he take virtue away with him? Did he take concentration, discernment? Did he take the good things of life away with him? No. They're still there. The good things that mean the things that create true happiness inside the mind, those are still there. We want to remember that at all times, even as other people passed away. The happiness we had that depended on them is not the true happiness that the Buddha teaches. He teaches something higher than that. So we hold on to that. Okay, that stays regardless. And as long as we are careful to train ourselves in that goodness, then it's going to be ours. And we set a good example for the people who come after us as well. This is why it's customary that when someone has passed away that we do good. We practice generosity. We practice virtue. We practice meditation to remind ourselves that the really valuable things in life are still here for us to practice, to take advantage of, and also to pass on. And this way goodness doesn't die from the world, but it's because of our efforts that helps make it thrive, or it makes it die a little bit faster, wounds in it, if we, don't, if we don't practice. So make sure that we practice well. That's how we look after our well-being, the well-being of those who come after us, and the well-being of those who passed away. The goodness we do now reflects back well on them. We dedicate our merit to them, and if they're happy in the merit, okay, they gain merit as well. So this is something that spreads its goodness in all directions.